Yo, all right, y'all. Uh, before I begin this lesson, I just wanted to tell you guys a little story. Uh, back many eons ago when I was young, um, so maybe like 2011, 2012, I don't know, I, I was 16 at that time. And so um, uh, me and my parents, we took a little fishing trip to a place called Orange Beach, and that was in Alabama. And uh, of course we got there, we set up shop, like what, six fishing poles to one person, and, and the umbrella, the cooler, but we forgot one thing, food. <laughs> and so uh, my parents, um, they, uh, they told me that they were gonna go get food and they wanted me to stay, like, of course, behind and watch the stuff and continue fishing while they were gone. And so I did, <laughs> but little did I know that I was going to be stranded there or I was gonna be left alone there for three hours. Three hours. <laughs> It was in the summertime, so I was hot, and of course I was tired, and I was hungry. Not in the best of mood, right? <laughs> and so all I thought about then was, you know, when is my parents going to return and feed me or something like that. And so you could say the moment I was waiting for was my parents' return. And so today's topic, we're going to be in chapter 29 of the Devotional Doctrine series, and that is titled, The Moment That We All Have Been Waiting For. And so. Of course, since we're going over this book, it'll be based off of Christian's perspective. And so, you could say, what is the moment that we as Christians are waiting for? Well, since I was waiting for my parents' return, we as Christians, all of us, wait for the moment that, of course, Jesus Christ will return. So you might be thinking, you know, what's so special about Jesus coming back? Well, the thing is, he's going to come back to take his believers to live with him up in heaven. And so, that's a good thing, right? Well, sort of. If you also uh, realize, um, or I guess know about this through whether reading or other people telling you, it's also like a time of great uh, stress as well. Like a lot of things, things will be happening, such as in Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, it says this, For nation will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there will be famines and earthquakes. And further down that chapter, it says this in verse uh, 40 to 41, it says, Then there will be two men in the field. One will be taken up and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill and one will be taken and one will be left. And so that just scratches the, the very tip of the surface of, you know, the end times when Jesus is going to come. And so pretty, like just reading those few verses, it's going to be pretty scary about what's going to uh, happen according to uh, the final days. And so as all Christians, like the moment we've been waiting for is something very scary like that? Well, of course, no, because in, um, like the apostles knew about this like all the way back then. And of course, they comforted us as believers uh, about those times. In uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, it says this. Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. So of course they knew that it was going to be true that scary stuff were going to happen in those days but of course um, like they also mentioned other truths as well in the Bible if we read along such as uh, it will be unexpected, everyone will notice, Jesus will have a physical body, his power and glory will be fully seen, Jesus will judge the righteous and the unrighteous, sin and death will end, all creation will be redeemed, and only the Father knows when that will be. So even though those scary things are true, um, like the, the list that I read to you is, is going to be true as well. Of course, some of them are scary, some of them are not scary, but yet they're all pretty much going to happen on that day. But yet, um, of course, the Bible is a very tricky book to interpret, to read, and so there are three topics in which, uh, in this case, that, um, of course, people who, are, like, know the Bible very well, it's like, it's hard for them to interpret as well what's going to happen on that day, such as, Jesus will return to rule on earth for a literal thousand years before the final judgment. The millennial reign is happening right now in the church age to be followed by his return, and uh, millennial is like, you could say the millennium age, in a Christian's perspective, it's like pretty much paradise or heaven on earth or yeah, something like that. And so moving along, it says the millennium represents Christ's reign in heaven and in the hearts of people while we wait for his return. So yeah, those three topics are what um, pretty much people get confused about what's going to happen during the end times in which who knows what's going to happen. Maybe all three of them 
like a little aspect of all three of them maybe uh, i don't know too sure we just gotta <laughs> be at the end times to know what's going to happen so we just gotta wait until that time comes to uh, pretty much get the answer so uh, pretty much like um, everything so far has been a list of what's going to go down when Jesus returns. So pretty much general ideas. It's um, not really the full extent of it because we have yet to ex like to witness that yet. But yet, um, of course, scary stuff, very confusing, uh, very like frightful. But yet, of course, I bring you good news again. When Jesus comes back, of course, he's going to take us um or well, him as, as his believers. He's going to take us to uh, heaven to live with him. But also it says this. When Jesus returns, all things will be made new, and death and sin will end. And so, even though there's, of course, the scary stuff, remember that there's also the good news about what Jesus is going to come to do. And so to conclude with um, my message, I'll bring it back to my uh, little story. Um, of course, when I was waiting for my parents to return, I was waiting in both anger and both fear. The angry part, of course, three hours left in the heat with me being hungry, I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't be mad? <laughs> and of course, um, the fear part, I actually had a fear that, of course, they were going to leave me there. I mean, for three hours, I was getting discouraged. <laughs> and so, pretty much the same thing with uh, us as believers. We just don't know when the end times are. And of course, Jesus doesn't know as well. Only God the Father knows. But yet, he did tell us in the Bible that... I'll be back. And of course, all my parents had were their word that telling me that they were going to be back as well. And so, like, of course, instead of waiting like me <laughs> for my parents, then how should we as Christians wait for God so that we don't, like in the Second Thessalonians uh, chapter with uh, the apostles reassuring people about, you know, the end time stuff. It's like, how should we as Christians wait for God or for Jesus to return? And in here it says, uh, among believers, so Christians to Christians, we will live humbly. And of course, um, there are many, um, like I said, those three interpretations that people get confused. It's who knows what's going to happen and like who knows when the end times are going to be. So pretty much we, we coincide together. We, like, we live and we learn with each other for the day that you know, Jesus will come back. And so the next one, it's uh, living among unbelievers. So Christians, we uh, would live with uh, unbelievers through this by living hopefully. Instead of learning by my example of angry and fearful, meaning angry number one is like, when is Jesus going to come back? I'm tired of waiting for him. Or number two, fearful, it's like, did Jesus leave me already? Well, if he left me, he'll leave you too. And so pretty much we shouldn't be living like that. And so to live hopefully, of course, your hope and your faith could, of course, that could be the fuel, you know, when you give your testimony and when you give your hope and when you, when unbelievers just see your life as a Christian, uh, that could be the fuel that, you know, helps them uh, have that faith as well so that they too may be uh, a Christian and when that time comes that Jesus will take them up into heaven as well.